I know you gonna dig this. Get, get, fu- get funky with me. How you doing today? Here I am in Columbus, Georgia. I'm in a cemetery called Riverdale Cemetery, just off the main road, which is Veterans Parkway, I guess it's called, here in Columbus. Cool little town down here on the south. Kind of a chilly day for the south. It's always hot. And so I made a phone call yesterday because I had this, uh, I had a grave I wanted to visit here. I wasn't sure where it was in the cemetery. And find it's not on find a grave the coordinates, so I was like, hmm. And then I, I read a brief description of how to find this grave, and it w- w- didn't help at all. It was in very strange directions, to say the least. And so I called, met somebody, just about two minutes to five o'clock, so that person wants to go home, I get it. And, uh, they were very helpful, but she said, oh yes, yes, I, I know the grave you're talking about. She, and she said, you'll be able to find it. Look for the big top. And I said, okay. And I said, any other kind of landmarks I should look for? She goes, I think it's section two. Very sweet, but just very kind of, you know, I didn't know. I was like, okay, look for section two. Hopefully it probably marks. So section one is where I look. I've been driving around the cemetery for half an hour at least. Just looking, looking for the big top. Because this video is about a tragic accident involving circus performers. I've done great graves like this. I've done stories like this before. And uh, this one piqued my interest. It took place November 22nd, 1915. A horrific, horrific train crash uh, not too far from here. And it's strange what what's at this grave too. The headstone seems is is cool, different, and it's sad what it represents. And I might add again, the lady was very sweet on the phone. She wasn't dismissive at all. <laughs> I could just tell her, you know, it's like two minutes to five, it's like Who's this guy calling about a circuit, the circus grave? You know, uh, I'm not a family member or anything, so I think she was just like, yeah, this is section two, you'll find it, you'll find it. And so shout out to her, because she was very sweet on the phone. Let's take a look. It's right over here, actually. Very, very old cemetery in some parts. Like we got some great, well, this is, oh, these are 1989, 1992. I thought they were old. I see some fresh flowers, but not a lot. Uh, not a lot of these graves. A few fresh flowers over here we're going to see, but as I've driven through the cemetery and shown you parts of it. Some parts are really, uh, there's an arborist working right now in the cemetery. He's paid by the city, I guess, or works for the city. Um, I just asked him if he knew about it. And he said beyond that hedge there, if you see that row of hedges, that's a private part. It's open, but that's owned by a different uh, cemetery. So it's a cemetery within a cemetery? I'm not exactly sure, but it's open and there are a bunch of graves in there indeed. But yeah, if you look around, and so he said, he never heard of it, but the trees are really well maintained, so good on him. 
So it was four days before Thanksgiving in 1915, and the Con T. Kennedy Circus was almost over for the season. They had just played a show, did a show, had a show, in Atlanta, the Atlanta Exposition, where it set records for money and attendance. The next stop, Girard, Alabama, across a newly opened bridge from Columbus. Columbus, I might add, is very, very close to the uh, Alabama-Georgia border. So the train and its performers on board, they were six miles out of town. The tracks ahead, they were believed to be clear. Now there was a passenger train headed to Macon that had left Columbus and was supposed to wait at Muskogee Junction. They didn't wait. This train barreled onto the main track near a bend at Bull Creek. It collided head-on with the unsuspecting circus train. They were going 30 to 35 miles per hour when they plowed into one another at 1.26 p.m. Nine minutes before the regular train was supposed to pull out. The flames, they were as hot as a furnace. They moved through the circus train, which was made of metal and wood, and loaded with oily tents that only just made the flames bigger. Up to 24 members, they're not exactly sure how many members of the circus uh, died. And then more than 50 survivors ended up in an overrun hospital nearby. So the engines telescoped into one another and they never left the track. Now the other train was much dirtier, there were no fatalities. So on the circus train, cars at the rear carrying an assortment of wild animals were untouched. So flames didn't hit them. But in between, nine cars were consumed in less than two hours. There's a whole bunch of stories about what happened on, like what was going on after the crash in the immediate moments afterwards. Stories about an angry circus bear on the loose. So hunters came trying to find the bear. Nothing ever came of that. Parrots flying through the sky. Monkeys, they were frightened and frantic. They jumped into the trees next to the rail bed. Circus people, knowing they would hamper rescue efforts, shot the monkeys out of the trees. I, I what? I, I mean, how would they really hamper it? I don't know. There's another. It's uh. so obviously the show in Gerard, Alabama, did not go on, and the circus people were left without places to stay or money for food. The city of Columbus rallied around them in a group of women's club. Uh, ladies fed them a Thanksgiving meal over in the Murat building on First Avenue. Thanksgiving morning a pastor at the First Baptist Church he led a funeral service down 12th Street. Nobody had ever seen a service quite like this. They played a somber version of Rock of Ages as they crept down the street to the church. Every pew was filled. The day after the services what was left of the Con T. Kennedy show went to Albany, Georgia, then to Jacksonville, Florida. And that was their last show for the year. The circus community is pretty um, close-knit. I guess it was back then. I'm not sure if it still is. They rallied around them, provided equipment and acts for the remaining dates. So this tombstone here doesn't say exactly how many people are here or how many animals are here. Because... This kind of it was ashes and of the train of the people and the animals they were shoveled here and buried so the tombstone is kind of a general memorial isn't that odd like there's we're gonna we're gonna go closer but there's no names it's just, I mean other than the Con T Kennedy but no names of the people News reports claim 24 people died. Later accounts put it closer to 15. A little less windy now, thank goodness. It is shaped like a big top. That's wild. Huh. Some interesting sounds around me. Some other stories were that the owner, Colin T. Kennedy himself, attempted to save those trapped in the front. One eyewitness said, and I quote, I saw those poor fellows pinned in their sleepy wagons and they could not get out. There were a couple of carnival performers named Fred and Myrtle Kempf, and they realized they were trapped in their sleeping compartment. 
In a last-ditch effort to save their daughter, Myrtle passed her off to rescue workers. She survived, but her parents and two carloads of animals were burned alive. And the fire went on for hours. When the smoke finally cleared, more bodies were discovered in the wreckage. So it's kind of due to the, back then, the transient nature of show people. That's how it's hard to say exactly how many. But it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking, of course, about the people. And as an animal lover myself, um, as I think a lot of you are as well, think of poor animals who don't know what the heck is going on. I mean, is it worse to know? I mean, you know what I mean? It's hard to explain what I'm trying to say. But people at least, you know, they, they're, they're doing their best to get out. And, but animals, I mean, they, they, they're, they're trapped. They don't, they don't know. They can't open doors or open windows. You know, it sounds trite. It sounds silly. But they don't. don't they don't know. And they're burned alive. We'll not forget thee, we who stay to work a little longer here. Thy name, thy faith, thy love shall be on memory's tablet, bright and clean. Bright and clear, sorry. And when, O oh, weird by the, by the toil of life, our heavy limbs shall be, we'll come and one, day, one by one lie down upon dear mother earth with thee. It reads here, will not forget thee, we who stay, to work a little longer here. Thy name, thy faith, thy love shall be on memory's tablet, bright and clear. And when, O oh, wearied by the toil of life, our heavy limbs shall be, we'll come and one by one lie down upon dear Mother Earth with thee. Perpetual care. So somebody's looking after it. Created in 1916 by Elledge and Norman Monument Company, Edward Wise Allen Foreman, in memoriam here, and then on the side, I mean on the front, erected by the Car and T. Kennedy shows in memories of their comrades who lost their lives in a rail railroad wreck near Columbus, Georgia, November 22nd, 1915. And at the front, we've got... Employees of the Con T. Kennedy shows killed in Iraq, November 22nd, 1915. A lot of people have come out here and left some things, some pennies, quarters. It's nice to see. That the people and the animals here are not forgotten. Wow. Over a hundred years old, this monument. If you are looking for, if you're in Columbus, you want to see it, come right in the front entrance, you'll see part of my finger right there, the, uh, the, office make us make a left extreme left come all the way to the second last row make a right section one you won't miss it it's a lot easier come in right by the office and then make a left then a right thank you for watching everybody um it is odd to think that just ashes and i mean what else was shoveled up, carried over, and placed, uh, dropped into a mass grave where it's, it's parts of train, equipment, you know, luggage maybe, and people and animals. And that's what I read, and I, I was just blown away. I was, you know, like, <sighs> rest in peace to everybody on that train and uh and the animals as well thanks for watching everybody love it all peace out